Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 through 21. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of the high places, by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared unto it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. By me kings reign, princes decree justice. By me princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. Let's pray. Dearly Father, thank you for this passage. Thank you for the opportunity to consider your word, especially here of wisdom, the important spirit of yours uh, that, you, that cries out in all, to all people. Lord, I pray that you just help us to understand wisdom and to uh, receive it and to believe it. And just now I pray. Amen. All right. Doth not wisdom cry? You know, a lot of times back in the day, they, they talked about how that real men don't cry, but real men with wisdom cry. Real men with wisdom in their heart. Uh, real, real people that have wisdom, they cry. And they, they cry not out of self-pity, but rather they cry uh, for others. They f- cry for others. If you don't have a heart for others, just as wisdom cries out and seeks the simple. We saw in the previous passages uh, of uh, the, the woman, uh, the, the, the subtle woman of heart. Uh, the, uh, we see the simple man. And when Solomon's looking out at his, at his, uh, out of his terrace there, and he's not saying, oh, look at the fool, look at the simple person, and look at the, uh, that evil woman there, that seducious. Oh, look at the... He wasn't looking down in judgment. What was he looking down? He says, hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend unto my words. He, even in their foolishness, in their error, in their wickedness, was saying, listen to me. He's crying out to them. He was in yearning, saying, this is, think about this, this is the king the, 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 the king of Solomon, the, one of the greatest kings, one of the wisest kings, he's looking down at one of his lowliest subjects, if you will, the, 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 the earthliest subjects, the most simple and base of people, and he's yearning for them. He's yearning that they would receive knowledge, that they would desire knowledge, that they would seek knowledge. He says, let not thine heart decline into her ways. Go not astray into her paths. Don't go down that wrong path, for she cast many wounded. He, he's looking at them and saying, hey, you know, many people have gone that way, and, and, and I, don't, I want to save your life. I want to save you. So the, the wise cry is not one of judgment, looking down on other people, but it's a cry for understanding, a cry, receive of me, receive of me. It's some, uh, the, the wise person gives of themselves to help others. We see here the wise person, why, doth not wisdom cry? If you don't have a heart for others, like wisdom has a heart for others, then you're not a wise person. You're not a good person. You're not a righteous person. Here, wisdom, the very first thing that we see of wisdom here, and in this passage, of course, chapter 8, is we've been introduced to various different aspects of society. We've been introduced into the right way, the wrong way, and have change of this and change of that. And now he's saying, Here's, here is wisdom. Here is what wisdom is made up of. The, the first thing we see what wisdom is made up of is the cry for others to attend unto wisdom, to, to come. You're, you're not going to atten, uh, obtain wisdom 
and then leave everybody else alone. That's not true wisdom. Uh, that's greed, that's selfishness. That's the, way, the evil, wicked way, looking down upon others and judging others. But wisdom, doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? Wisdom and understanding together, they're, they're seeking the simple, they're seeking the foolish, they're seeking the errant. And they say, and they treat each other like children. Hark unto me now for all ye children. Oh, ye young people, oh, simple ones, they're seeking to lift people up. When we cry to others, is it in judgment, pushing people down, or is it for our own selfish gains, or it is to the yearning of wisdom to bring others with them, with her? She standeth in the top of the high places by the way of the, palace, uh, of the palaces of the paths. So we see here the second point of wisdom, of course, wisdom draws and, and seeks for other people. And understanding with her, uh, wisdom and understanding. She seeks t- for all people to understand wisdom, uh, to understand her. And she's not hidden. You know, she's a, as a city on a hill. She is not hidden. People say, well, it's too hard to know wisdom. It's too hard to understand what's right or what's wrong. She's not hidden. It's not hard to find wisdom. All you have to do is look. Look and live. Look and see. Wisdom is there for you. She standeth in the top of the high places. Lift your head up and see her. By the way, in the palace, pal, palaces of the paths, in, in the chief places, you know, she crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming uh, at, in at the doors. So you're not going to find wisdom in the secret places. So oftentimes people say, well, uh, true wisdom is really hidden. You have to find it in deep, dark places. You have to dig deeply for it. Yes, you have to desire it, but, that, but the, wis- the true wisdom is not hidden away in some secret dark cave. It can't be bound and, and said, oh, this wisdom's only for a select few. Wisdom that is true wisdom is available for every single person in the world. They just have to look, lift their heads up and look. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. So you see that door over there? That's where wisdom is. Any door you go to, there's wisdom there. There's uh, something that's been built there. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. He's looking at the men. She's looking at the men and looking at their children and saying, I'm calling unto you. I'm calling and seeking you. So we see here, firstly, that, yes, wisdom cries, wisdom seeks, and it's not hidden. It's open to all. It's available to everybody. You know, of course, we often talk about how that the government has state secrets and stuff like this. The wisdom that's available is not, is not state secrets. It's not hidden away in some vault before, you know, the old Indiana Jones end scene where, where they got the Ark of the Covenant and they're, they're sending it down into a, uh, in a vault somewhere and it's hidden away in some secret dark. That's not... Wisdom isn't bound in that. It, it's, it's available and open for all people. It's to and fro, up and down in the earth, searching for the hearts of men. It says, oh, ye simple. See, she doesn't care if you're wise or simple or fools. She's, she's calling primarily to the simple. Notice here, oh, ye simple, understand wisdom. So the simple people, they don't have wisdom. She's trying to give it to them. And then fools, and ye fools, be of an understanding heart. Fools are people that are foolishly not looking for wisdom. She's calling out for people that really either does, doesn't have wisdom or abuses wisdom, doesn't use it properly. Uh, and yet she's still seeking them. Do we still seek the lost? Do we still seek those who, who don't have? Or are we looking down upon them? The wise man, the wise woman, they seek to impart understanding and wisdom to others. They seek to impart her knowledge. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be of an understanding heart. The way a fool can get out of his foolishness is to start having, deal with his heart, to understand stuff. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things. What it, it starts with the hearing of the ears. I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. You think about this, is that she's crying out. She's on high places. If they look, they'll see her. But even when they're not looking, she's crying in their ears. How to times you can, you can know what's going on, even if you're not looking at a certain direction by what you hear in your ears. Oh, ye simple, understand. 
Here for I'll speak of excellent things. The wisdom is not, it's not bad things, it's excellent things, the greatness. When you, when you obtain wisdom, you are looking for something greater, something better than yourself. It is beyond yourself. It is something higher than yourself. You think about what the, the psalmist says uh, of, uh, of the Lord. Uh, about his wisdom and about his knowledge. Oh, it's so high, uh, almost so that I can't attain it to it. It's, it's higher than the heavens. It's greater. It, it's, it's, my, it's something more than myself. It's something greater than myself. It's, it's to have an understanding that there is something greater than myself out there. It's to be uh, fully aware of your senses. It's to be fully aware of what's coming into you and be able to understand and discern. So we see that the wisdom of God is not something unavoidable. It's not something that you cannot find and unobtainable. It's there available for all people. Here, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. So we see here that when somebody is seeking wisdom, somebody is trying to understand wisdom, they need to look for excellent things. They need to look for right things. In other words, uh, wisdom is to those who are of age where they can discern between the good and the evil. They, they have a, a discernment about them. They, be, they, they need to be able to know the difference between the two. Uh, he says, here and I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be of right things. So we, we see here excellent things. If something is not excellent, it's probably not based on wisdom. It's probably based on something uh, evil, an evil way. Uh, and so we need to seek, when we seek for wisdom, we need to seek for excellent things. And then w in order to uh, seek for excellent things, we need to look for right things. There are some things that seem at first glance to be excellent. You, you think about uh, John uh, the Revelator when he's looking at the, uh, the woman who rides the beast and he wandered. He's like, oh, wow, that's so wonderful, so beautiful, so uh, the world would call excellent in its structure and its majesty. But it wasn't right. No, it was not a right thing. And so we need to see that oftentimes certain things look excellent or, or beautiful or wonderful or, or something to be grasped at or to be obtained. But because it's not right, it prevents us from truly obtaining wisdom. It prevents us from obtaining the excellency. Uh, strive for excellence. You know, there was the, there was the old uh, honor guard uh, one of the soldiers said, was, was known to have quoted, stated that uh, he knows that nobody can be perfect, but in the pursuit of perfection, they obtain excellence. So here it says, Here, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. So we see that wisdom is first excellent, and it's right things. So if you're looking at wrong things, then it's not excellent. It's not going to be uh, the right path. So as you pursue right things, you'll pursue excellence. For my mouth shall speak truth. So wisdom is excellent, and it is right things, and it is true. If, you, if something is not true, then you're not pursuing wisdom. You're fo pursuing foolishness or something perverse. And so it's a pursuit of truth. Wisdom is a pursuit of truth. And wickedness an abomination to my lips if you're doing something that is wicked and you know it to be wicked, then that's not wisdom. That's not true. You might be able to be a subtle heart. You might be able to be conniving. You may be able to secretly sneak it by and steal treasures and things that, that you fulfill your lust, but it's not, it's not right. It's not good. It's not true. And therefore, it's not true wisdom. You're, the end of that way will be destruction. But the, the end of truth is excellence. The end of truth is, is, is wonderful, is, is excellent. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness, righteousness. So if something is not right or in righteousness, then it is not true wisdom. So if you go and do something that is not right towards somebody else, so we see the golden rule was the golden rule is like do unto others they would have you do unto them or something like that. Uh, and so we understand that wisdom, true wisdom is doing what is right towards other people. If it's not right towards other people, then it's not true wisdom. It's not, it's not excellent. It's not good. It's not truth. Truth is, is loving your fellow man. Truth is loving one another and loving God as yourself. You know, those things. Loving your neighbor as yourself. He says, he says, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness 
So in other words, if your mouth is in false things, if your lips are in abominations, if you're doing those things that are wrong in wickedness, which is the opposite of righteousness, then you are pursuing not wisdom, but wickedness, evil. You're, and you will be destroyed. But if you follow excellence, you'll be rewarded. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. Forward means you're taking a little bit uh, forward or perverse is li taking a little bit of what's right and then twisting it. Forward, basically, you're, you're taking things your own way. I'm forwarding my own path. I'm forwarding uh, what I want to do. I don't care what anybody else wants to do. I'm going to do this, and, and I'm going to say that I'm the one's right. Notice this lady in the previous passage. What did she do with the Lord? I have uh, sacrificed to the Lord so that I can go do this evil. That's not right. That's not wisdom. I have paid my vows, and therefore I can do what I wish. That's perverse. Perverting the right ways of the Lord. How long will you pervert the right ways of the Lord? Notice this also, that they are plain. The words of wisdom are plain. A lot of times people say, well, true wisdom is hidden. You know, the, 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 the Gnostics. Uh, you got to sneak in. You got to see what's actually behind the page. You, you, and this is the thing, too, is that so oftentimes people think allegory is something that's hidden behind the words or, or some mysterious um, secret message. You know, Jesus said these words out here. Now, we understand, of course, there's a deeper meaning. Like, for example, a parable, there's the plain message. You know, if you plant four types of seeds in four different types of, you know, same type of seed in four different types of ground, you're going to get four different types of harvest, right? That is a plain message. Well, but the secret message is, no. The, the spiritual message is also plain. It's not some secret uh, allegorical put in what I want. Allegory is not put in what I feel like putting in and, and I'm going to mix and match and choose this. And true biblical allegory is, is taking the principle of a passage and then applying it to all instances of where that principle is applied to, to uh, unveil deeper meaning. Uh, but it's not to just mix and match and plug and play. Well, I'm going to make this allegory to the church and that allegory to Israel and then I'm going to mix and match and no, that's not how allegory works. It's the, the true principle behind the passage or the plain principle uh, uh, spiritual behind the passage uh, is, is true allegory. He says, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain. Notice this, the word all. They're not, some of it's plain and then hard over here, it's, it's plain. Just because something's hard does not necessarily mean it's obscure. You see what I mean? Uh, sometimes people, the, the hard to be understood part, you know, Paul, you know, Peter said that some of Paul's words were what? Hard to be understood uh, to those that rest the scriptures. You know, but if you're diligent in seeking to understand what Paul is saying, He's not hard to be understood. He's very, Paul is actually very plain in what he's saying. The, the hardness or the difficulty comes to those who are not listening to what Paul is actually saying and rest it to their own destruction. So we need to understand that true wisdom is plain. It's open for all to know and to see. They just have to be diligent to take it as it's written. So oftentimes people take a false doctrine and try to shove it into Scripture, and then it makes other passages hard to understand. But yet, if they read it plainly, the truth is there in front of them. If they don't just try to insert their own doctrine. Uh, and so, so oftentimes, like for example, uh, someone will take Peter's words uh, in, in Acts chapter 2 and say, well, you know, salvation, you have to be baptized in order to obtain salvation. You know, and then they, they have a hard time and you, you, people argue about Acts chapter 2 where it says uh, believe and be baptized or whatever it says. Uh, and they're trying to insert uh, baptism as a means for salvation. They're inserting their doctrine there. But if you just take it plainly as for people that are already devout Jews who are already believers in Christ, uh, and then they realize that they, they just didn't, in the Old Testament, they didn't, the believers in Christ, they didn't realize that Jesus was the Christ. See, Paul revealed to them that Jesus, whom you persecuted, was the Christ in whom you already believe. They were already saved. And he says, what should we, what should we do? They were pierced in the heart. We devout Jews, we believed in the coming of Christ, but then we killed our Savior. 
in, in error. Their leaders did. But the plain meaning of that passage is not that be baptized for salvation, but rather join the church. You know, get baptized and join the church. And 3,000 of those devout believers were, what did they join the church? Who were saved. The Bible says, who became, didn't say who became saved, but who were saved. Uh, that would be saved, that, that were saved. Uh, and so you, if you look at the plain meaning of a passage and you look at it in its context plainly, then every passage in this scripture will not be hard. I've looked at it, you know, there are difficult passages in the scriptures. Now, I'm not saying that I've perfected myself, but I look at a passage and then as long as I look at it in its context, in the, in the context of the book, in the context of as it's re being read, there are times when people always take things out of context for their own doctrine and confuses it, makes it hard for people to understand. Like passages in Hebrews, they take things out of context. But if you read it as it's written in the scriptures plainly, in the context, it, it, the Lord it, with an honest and sincere heart and truth and plainness, it's all plain. It's all clear. You're like, wait a minute. I, I don't know why people said, have such a hard time with this passage. And I'm reading this in this context prayerfully and carefully. And the meaning is clear. How'd that happen? It's not just because I mix and match. It's because I realize that everything is plain. Everything that is excellent. Everything that is true. Everything that is righteous. And, and so I'm not, tr I'm not trying to go into the scripture from the viewpoint of Calvin or, or the viewpoint of Arminius. I'm not trying to insert this or the Church of Christ that or this. I'm just reading it as, Lord, show me your truth. Show me in your wisdom. Show me the plainness of the scriptures. And it opens up to you. Now, now you're not going to understand every single deep, start, dark saying, but if you take it in its context, as we have been, uh, and in even different various passages, we can see the plainness of the scriptures. We can see that there's different applications, but the plainness of the scriptures is revealed by simply taking it as it's stated. They are all plain, not just some of it, not just occasional of it, but all plain to him that understandeth. Not to him that try to be confused about it. Say, Lord, help me to understand this. Same way with Revelation. So many people have inserted, cut, and mixed, and matched, and, and, and reassembled the, the, the Revelation in order to get their own pet doctrine. That They just read it plainly. They, they take, realizing that it's taken based upon all the scriptures of the Old Testament, and then its final foundation, it's the, it's the final foundation of all the doctrine that we learned before coming to it, if you learn and plainly take all the scriptures before, then you're able to receive revelation. But so oftentimes what happens? Brand new Christian. Oh, I'm brand new Christian. I want to have, find out what happens in the future. And they don't know any of the doctrine in the first 65 books of the Bible. And then they decide, I'm going to flip to Revelation. Because that's the only book that hasn't really been technically fulfilled yet. You know, there's some Ezekiel, some prophecies in Isaiah and different places that haven't yet been fulfilled. Uh, and, and, and Zechariah and different things. But and to their understanding, you know, we've gone through the New Testament. And, and, the, and Revelation is the only New Testament book that hasn't been fulfilled yet. And so they're going to uh, jump right in there. And why do a lot of people that bring people after themselves do? the very beginning, they don't jump into the Gospels. They don't jump into, what do they do? They jump into Revelation. Why? Because that's where they can manipulate people. That's where they can put their forwardness. That's where they can pervert the plain reading of the Scriptures to bring a leading after themselves. But, you know, that's why I haven't, you know, I, I've been studying it. I've been looking at it. But I haven't actually been spending a whole lot of time on trying to promote Revelation. Why? Because it's not for the new Christian. It's for those who have studied their scriptures plainly and looked at everything plainly in the context of scriptures, reading it not based upon some random chart that some guy gets on the board, but based upon their years of understanding of scripture. And then it becomes plain. He says, they are all plain. They all plain to him that understandeth. If you seek wisdom first, if you... Read it plainly. If you realize that everything in Scripture is in this right way and not trying to make it forward or perverse and take it plainly, then you'll understand and write to them that find knowledge. See, if you don't have knowledge of the previous Scriptures, you can't understand Revelation. It's not plain to you. But when you do know the rest of the Scriptures, it becomes plain. 
He says, she says here, receive my instruction and not silver. So we see here that in trying to discern wisdom, your heart has to be right. You have to first be listening for wisdom. You have to, be, you have to first be seeking something excellent. You have to first be seeking right things. You have to first be seeking um, things that are not perverse, not abomination. You can't have in your heart, well, I prefer the alternative lifestyle, so I'm going to be reading the scriptures with the mind of the alternative lifestyle to prove that it's right. You know, the, the, they have this sort of thing, weird thing called the Queen James Bible. What's the whole purpose of that? Is to prove that, uh, that um, all the alternative lifestyles are actually okay with God? Uh, what are they trying to do? They're perverting the right way of the scriptures, and therefore they're never going to obtain wisdom. Why? Because they have put forwardness and perversion in their method of scripture reading. If you seek wisdom, you seek something that is excellent, you will say, Lord, if, if this alternative lifestyle is right, you'll reveal it to me. If it's wrong, uh, you'll, you'll reveal it to me, and, and I, will, I will accept either way as you, as you call fit. If I'm to, supposed to treat uh, the, the people with dignity, if I'm supposed to hate them, whatever I'm supposed to do, Lord, show me what I'm supposed to do in this situation to that person. And we say here, unto all men I call, my voice is the sons of men. All you simple ones understand wisdom, and you fools be of understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things. You've got to be listening. You've got to be hearing for excellent things. And you need to think of right things. And then you have to think of things that are true and that are not perverted truth and are not forwardness. And forwardness meaning your own way of, uh, of I want this to be true. I'm going to read the scriptures with this in mind for it to be true. I'm going to force this into, that's being forward. And perverse means I'm going to just twist everything to, to, to the doctrines that I've already learned. So you see, forwardness is making your own way in the scriptures, trying to make them, the scriptures apply to you in your own perverseness. And then perversion is taking somebody's doctrine and twisting the scriptures to fit that doctrine. You can't do that. If you want true wisdom, if, you know, because if you take somebody's doctrine, there'll be a lot of parts will fit, but then there'll be these bits and pieces that don't fit anywhere, and you'll be like, what do I do with these? It's because they perverted the doctrine of the scriptures. They're not reading it in its context. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. They won't lead you to any perversion. There's nothing forward. In other words, there's nothing in it that you, you can force it. If you force it, then you're not going to obtain true wisdom. If you try to pervert it with somebody else's doctrine, then you're not going to get the true doctrine of the Scriptures. And they are all plain to him that understandeth. In other words, if there's a passage of Scripture that is not plain to you, or you feel like it's not actually saying what it's actually saying, then you, you're, you have to ask the Lord, help me to remove the forwardness Help me uh, of my own attitude towards the scriptures and help me to remove the perverseness of somebody's wrong doctrine so that I may see the plain reading of the scripture so that I may understand it. This is the prayer to the Lord that you would have to pray. And, and because if a, a passage, every, if the Bible says here, they are all plain to him that understandeth. That means that if, I, if it's not plain to me, I don't understand and there's something preventing me from understanding. And then you have to backtrack. What do you have to do? If, if you see a plain passage of Scripture that is plainly written in black and white or in red or whatever color you have in your Bible, and then you don't understand, what do you have to do? Okay, I don't understand this. Is there a perverse doctrine that I'm studying or is there a doctrine that I think is right but is actually wrong? Search me and try me, Lord. Find out. Is it, and if there's no doctrine, I feel like all the doctrines that I've been taught are correct. Then I move on to, what, then I ask the Lord, why is it then the passage not plain to me? Why is it that I don't understand it? Is there something that I am adding to the scriptures? Am I removing some, something from the scriptures? Is there something in my life that I'm holding on to preventing me from understanding this passage? Uh, maybe I just don't know enough scriptures to understand this passage. Because this pa sometimes, a lot of times, like Revelation, you have to know Old Testament scriptures before you can get to New Testament Revelation. And sometimes you just don't have enough knowledge yet to obtain that wisdom. Sometimes a dark saying is not dark to those who have light. Uh, so you have to say, is there forwardness in what I'm thinking? Am I trying to get to a passage 
that I don't understand yet because I haven't studied the other passages that apply to this. He says, there is nothing forward or perverse in them. So if I have forward or perverseness, I won't be able to understand it. And are in righteousness. If my heart is not right with the Lord, how can I expect to receive understanding from his scriptures? Because I'm not right with the Lord. I have to ask the Lord, am I right with you? Is my heart right with you? All the words of my mouth. He says, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Am I holding on to some sort of wickedness? That God is looking at me and saying, and wisdom is looking at me and saying, you're, you're an abomination to me. Why would I want to hang out with you to give you information? I got to ask the Lord, am I being prevented? Herefore, I speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be of right things. So, am I not understanding scriptures because I'm not doing something that's, that I'm holding on something that's wrong? Do I, am I looking at something that's base? Am I looking at the scriptures not in, am I, am I looking at the scriptures as an excellent thing up here? Or I'm looking at it as, oh, I don't really like that scriptures. Oh, I don't really like that. Oh, that, that's, that's kind of rubbing me the wrong way. I don't really like that. Oh, that, that goes against my culture. I don't really like that. What's happening there? I'm treating the scriptures as something that is not excellent. Do I treat the scriptures as above thy word, above thy own name? You know, the, the Lord said about his word, uh, that the Lord treats the word, his words as more excellent than his very own name. Seeing that is secret, but yet this is plain. See, the Lord's name is secret. He prefers that you see the plain reading of his scriptures than the, his secret name. He says, all are plain to him that understandeth and right to him that findeth knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver. Am I looking to learn about the scriptures so I can get money? How many Bible teachers are out there selling their 60,000 book? Oh, they got 35 books out. You know, the, the guy's 25 and he has 35 Bible books out. How does that work? <laughs> you know, you see some of these, some of these people, I'm like, like amazed. How do you get so many Bibles out? They probably got shadow authors or something out there. But like everybody's, every year they're coming out with five different new books that are 65 plus pages long, you know, 250, 300 pages long. And where are they getting all this? You know, unless he's like there 24 seven, just typing out, grinding out messages. Um, where are they getting all these books from? You know, and selling them. You know, now I don't have anything wrong about somebody who spends a lot of time and effort in preparing material and then selling them at cost or selling them a little bit above to, to make a living for themselves. That's fine. Not a problem. You know, you put the effort in. The laborer is worthy of his hire. But are you doing, are you learning Bible? Are you trying to get wisdom simply to be Del Carnegie? Are you learning wisdom simply to be a rich person? You won't get true Bible wisdom if, you're, if your end goal is to get money. So we see here the perverseness that are, that are keeping us to understand the plain scriptures. And he says, receive my instruction and not silver. Don't try to get instruction so that you can obtain money. That's what the perverse people did. Remember, they, they lie in wait and try to get silver from other people. He says, I wisdom dwell with prudence. Prudence. What is prudence? Prudence. So, for wisdom is better than rubies, and all things that may be desired are not to be compared to her. Prudence, of course, in Scripture says, uh, Prudence, uh, Webster's 18.28 says, Wisdom applied to practice. Wisdom applied to practice. So, wisdom and knowledge crying out with prudence. With prudence. Applying to practice. Taking what you hear and applying it. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. So we see here, we see here that, uh, that wisdom, so we see if you don't seek out wisdom, uh, he says, seek out my instruction and not silver. So wisdom, you hear it and then you say, okay, how do I apply this instruction and knowledge rather than choice gold? For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared unto it. I wisdom dwell with prudence, the practice of wisdom. So as you practice wisdom, thereby, you know, the Bible talks about how you should uh, sincere milk of the word and thereby grow. You're, you're using it, not being one that is a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, uh, somebody who's practicing and, and working at it. 
Uh, wisdom applied to practice, prudence implies caution in deliberating and consulting on the most suitable means to accomplish valuable purpose and the exercise of uh, sagacity in discerning and selecting them. I'm not sure if that was the right word there, but anyway. Prudence differs from wisdom in this, that prudence implies mere, more caution and preserve, persevere than wisdom, or is an exercise more in foreseeing and avoiding evil than in devising and executing that which is good. It is sometimes more mere caution or circumspection. Prudence is principally in reference to actions to be done, and do means order, season, and method of doing or not doing something. So we see, we see high wisdom dwell with prudence. So we see here that if you are just trying to gain wisdom and instruction of wisdom, simply so that you can sell books or sell the information to somebody else, uh, or just for the delight of learning, now, like, I like to learn, I like to learn things, but, he sa but she says here that I also dwell with prudence. In other words, the practice of it. It, it not, it's not good enough that you just try to learn it, but it, it, you need to put it into practice. How often times that uh, until you actually put in something to practice that you actually um, are able to receive of it, uh, to actually learn more. As you put it into practice, the more you get familiar with it, the more comfortable you, you know, you can be instructed in something, but until you actually are actively practicing it, you can't fully understand it. It doesn't become habitual to you. Um, he says, and find out knowledge of witty inventions, witty inventions. You think about all the things that wisdom has taught mankind over the years. You, you, you got the image at first, you know, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, they go out of the garden and they're kind of like cavemen type, type people. You know, you get the pictures of them in, in, in loincloths and, and the little uh, bare skin uh, half, uh, you know, the, the shirt that goes kind of like that, like kind of a caveman. Ugh, found, found wisdom, ugh. You know, make fire. You know, you got somebody who uh, being cast out of the garden and then they, they were instructed on how to make clothing and then they, they learned how to make fire to cook food and, and different things. And then we, th we see the old adage of, the, of the, the guy creating fire and then from the fire you, you start building up and being able to create more things, learning to use fire to warm yourselves in the winter, learning to, use, to harness fire to make uh, boiling water learning how to use boiling water to, uh, to make mechanical energy uh, in the steam engine, and then the steamboat, and then the steam vehicles, and then you're using steam, uh, and then you're using compression, and you're making these cars, and now you, you just see the progression. You look at anything that we have here, uh, this wood table, uh, these, uh, you know, the, these cell phones in our pockets, this, the, the binding on this book. This material that I can print out uh, messages on, you know, this, and then the machine, the, the ink machine, the inkjet printer. I mean, all that stuff didn't start out, um, you know, he leaves the garden and all of a sudden they got inkjet printers. No, it's, it's a progression of knowledge, witty inventions. That's a witty invention, the vehicle, the, the printer and all those things. And so we see that wi the wisdom we already are using practically, uh, the prudence is how do we use this properly? It's like the fire can either burn down the forest or it can heat your home and create civilization. Uh, and, and the witty inventions that you use with this information that you get uh, can progress and build upon each other. So just as you don't start from the garden, getting cast out of the garden and having modern society, it took, took 6,000 years to get to this point. Uh, and you know, that's prudence with wisdom being able to take the wisdom that you have, apply it and practice it, and then as you practice it, obtaining more wisdom. And so we see here that until you uh, join wisdom with prudence, discerning, hey, here's the right ways to use this instruction, here's the right way to do that, here's the wrong way to use that, you know, everything, every wisdom that you have has a right way and a wrong way. I can use, again, fire to either uh, light my homes or burn down that home. Prudence gives me discretion and gives me the ability to take that base knowledge and build upon it, combine it with other knowledges uh, to make something greater. And the same wisdom, the same prudence can help me in learning the scriptures as well. 
if I am running in a roadblock and I've done everything in, in the, the beginning of wisdom here with the instruction of wisdom, then I need to ask myself, am I being prudent with the wisdom I have been given to this point? And I am putting it into practice. Am I combining it to get witty inventions? Uh, to get something that says, oh, there we go. These by themselves don't make sense. But if I combine them together, they make what? A new invention, something that is new that I never knew before. So too is the plain reading of scripture that as you put principle upon principle together, they make something new that wasn't previously revealed to you. And then of course we, we could go on, but uh, we're gonna continue on with this passage next week, um, starting at verse 13. But the, the, to end this consideration, wisdom in chapter eight, verses one through 13, or at least one through 12, gets us to understand how to make wisdom. How to get true wisdom. What are the wrong things that people add to the scriptures, add to wisdom that stunts their wise growth? If you treat the scriptures as not something excellent to obtain, like as a little kid, until I learned to, you know, until I desired to read, I had no interest in learning how to read. I can look at pictures. I don't need to look at those word books. I got comics. I can look at, I can look at these funny little pictures. And then you, you start asking, asking, well, what are these little characters in the picture comics? Now, the cute cat here does this cute thing here, but I want to see what, what is it saying? Is this, oh, those are words that I'm speaking on written paper? How do I learn those? Why? Because I had an interest. I wanted to put my wisdom into practice. I knew how to look at pictures, but I didn't know what the characters were. They, they were not plain to me. Anybody who's learned how to read and write writing is plain to them. Somebody who's never learned how to read and write, it's not plain to them. But what's the difference in prudence, discerning uh, that, hey, they've they done these things. Now, if I was told that A is actually B and B is actually C, what would be that? That would be perverseness, right? If I, if I decided in my own decision, I'm going to make my own language and I'm going to have everybody learn my language so that everybody will write with my language, you know, Esperanto or something, what's going to happen? Everybody's going to look at me and say, your words aren't plain to me. And then I'm going to look at them, your words aren't plain to me. Why? Because I'm being forward and not wanting to learn true wisdom and making my own wisdom. And then when I try to say, well, well, I got this wisdom, but I'm going to put something that's not right about it because I like to do that. I want to do this. And so I'm going to pervert or I'm going to change. Then I'm not going to get true wisdom. So we see here in this passage the formula of truly getting and obtaining and hearing the instruction of wisdom and the prudence and to be able to make witty inventions. To, to, witty inventions are things, combining things together to make something new that is also true. In other words, fire is just as true as a locomotive who use, that uses combustion. You know, a twig on fire is the same technology that is making that engine go. Explosion, chemical reaction. And yet, what's the witty invention? The car that uses that same technology? Does that mean that cars are an invention of man? Yeah, in a sense they are, but they're also a, an accumulation of thousands of years of knowledge, of wisdom and prudence. You're not going to get revelation knowledge and level of understanding without first understanding Genesis all the way to first and second John, you know, whatever. Jude and Revelation, you know, you, you got to read and understand the rest of the book before you can get to the automobile. You need to know how fire works before you can make a combustion engine. It's just, you, you got to, you got to learn. Now, of course, there's ways that we can learn. We don't have to know the whole process to be able to drive a car. You know, that's the wonderful thing about knowledge and inventions. Knowledge is accumulation of knowledge over time that you can apply. You know, like I don't have to learn how to make a car in order to drive a car because I've obtained the knowledge that those people had to get the witty invention that uses it for me. And so that's knowledge in, in, in the nutshell. We'll continue working with that um, next week as we consider how to how they use this knowledge to rule nations and kingdoms. But with that, consider this. Am I, am I using wisdom properly? Am I seeking wisdom? And when I obtain wisdom, am I perverting it with something else? 
Or am I looking for the purity of Scripture? Am I looking for the purity of wisdom and, and trying to remove any perverseness, any forwardness, any wrongness in it? Because whenever those things are present, they become an abomination to me. They, they stunt my understanding of both Scripture and of wisdom in general. What do I do with wisdom? Do I pursue it to its furthest end, or am I stunted along the way? Let's be the type of people who removes all wrong things so that we can seek it with a right heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this passage. Thank you for the opportunity to consider your word. Lord, I just pray that you just help us to understand wisdom. Help us understand and, and take it with honesty and sincerity, uh, especially for the use and understanding of the plain readings of the scriptures. Lord, I just pray that you just be with us, understand the clarity of scripture. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.